Hello, welcome to episode 38 of Boxing with Ben. This is an episode that is going to look at the backwards hammer fist um, as a technique that can be used in a self-defense context. So I haven't made an addition to my street MMA series in a while and I thought that I would make an addition to this series with the backwards hammer fist. Um, I've made um, two demonstrations which I've tagged on to the end of this video. Um, so just before I kind of move you on to those, I want to explain the context behind them and explain a little bit about the backwards hammer fist and why I really, really regard it highly as a technique, despite the fact that I've said in the past um, that I generally like to advocate the use of open hand strikes if you're going to use your hands as striking tools in a street fight due to the risk of injury and breakage um, of your hands. So the first thing with the backwards hammer fist that I'd like to say is um, you don't have to connect with, you know, the side of your fist here, um, but instead you can connect with the bridge um, between your, your fist and your wrist. You can also connect with the forearm. Um, it really depends on range. Obviously this would be the maximum extension of your range, and then the closer you are in range to your opponent, the further down the forearm you could go. Um, so it's really range dependent um, as to where you connect. Um, a bit like with a kick, I've noticed in MMA sometimes when people are slightly out of range they'll throw a risky kick um, where they connect further down from the shovel of their foot and instead you know kind of connect with the end of their foot which if checked could end up seriously hurting or breaking their foot but they take that risk because they feel it necessary to you know cause some damage to their opponent and um, capitalize on an opportunity they've seen. It's the same with the backwards hammer fist. Generally you would rather connect with the bridge um, between the fist and the wrist um, or connect with the forearm, but if you have to connect with the maximum extension of your um, reach then you can connect obviously with the back of the fist. Um, so that's kind of the answer with regards to why I advocate it despite the fact that I argue that clenched fist or closed hand um, strikes typically lead to damage and breakages in street fights. So what sets this strike apart? Why do I think it's useful? Firstly, um, it's a shot that can be carried out from awkward positions, so um, it's not generally um, predicted or expected. So as an example, my first demonstration is actually that you've either taken a right hook or a right cross, and you're returning with the shot um, from a kind of perspective of dirty boxing. So when you enter a street fight, there are a whole host of reasons why you might be hit first. And I've said before that I personally um, believe in preemptive striking. Um, but only within a specific set of circumstances. So I don't believe in waiting to be hit. Um, I think that's foolish. Um, but I do believe that you should have done everything you can to de-escalate that situation before it evolves into a street fight in the first place. So in my opinion, you know, as I say, um, I've mentioned this in prior videos and you can refer to them for further detail on this, but it's the four-step process. Um, you know, first one is disengage. Um, secondly is escape um, and sort of within that um, escapism that can either be escaping physically or escaping verbally you know that can either be from a conciliatory role or that can be you know physically um, leaving via some form of exit um, or, or you know just escaping the situation um, three is of course deploying your martial skills in order to achieve an end result that gets you and you know whoever's with you home safely at the end of the night and four is aftermath where you deal with the legal and moral implications of what's happened and you tie everything up and make sure everybody's safe and is you know medically cared for etc um, so I've kind of outlined this in the past in a previous video and please refer to that for much much um, greater depth on all of this but within the context of that kind of you know, um, disengagement, um, conciliatory and physical escape, um, and, and kind of like surveillance of the situation as well. That's something that's quite important actually. I would say that this kind of runs throughout as a theme. So you've got kind of step one, which is that immediate disengagement. And by disengagement, I literally mean if you can feel yourself getting hot headed and your blood boiling, leave. Basically, it's kind of more of an emotional barometer. Um, so that stage one is before anything's really kicked off, but it's just kind of like if you've kind of noticed, you're, you know, using your own emotional barometer, which you should become quite adept at and quite aware of um, if you're a mixed martial artist. 
if you can feel yourself kind of boiling over and losing control then leave um, step two is obviously more so when the situation has started to escalate um, that's then when you've got the chance to kind of physically remove yourself um, once you've become aware that the situation is kind of escalating or you can use your conciliatory skills to bring the situation back to neutral but surveillance runs as a theme throughout steps one to four you know awareness perception having a knowledge of not only your surroundings not only in a physical sense and you know threats from other attackers your environment around you but but also just having an awareness of what's going on um, you know it's fight IQ fundamentally in self-defense it's more important than ever to be an intelligent um, practitioner as well as just being a, a physically proficient one um, so within that framework as I say um, and I do apologize for going off on a deviation there but I thought it was important to kind of outline this context I do believe in preemptive striking but only within the context of um, if I think that person is physically considering um, threatening my health so I don't mean preemptive striking somebody's pissed you off so you you know lay them out I mean as soon as somebody starts walking towards you um, strike I, you know, you give somebody prior warning, but I don't believe you wait until there's a chance that you're going to be harmed. You know, if if somebody walks towards you with the intent to hurt you, you strike them as soon as they get into striking range. Um, but before they do, you obviously say to them, "Please back off." You know, please back off. I don't want any trouble. Um, use conciliatory and diffusing language as best you can to resolve it. But as soon as they step into striking range, um, in my eyes, that's there. Um, signal of intent to hurt you um, and I don't believe in all this pseudo maso uh, pseudo maso sorry not masochistic masculine um, pseudo masculine bullshit of posturing you know I don't believe in the, the whole um, kind of WWE street fight culture of getting up in each other's faces and trash talking and you know that's all bullshit because I guarantee you one day that you'll do that and somebody will have the real and genuine intent to harm you you'll go to deliver your five minute speech that you've prepared in your brain and you'll get laid out um, and as I've said in the past you know any engagement on the street can be lethal um, and it's not often intentional but for example um, you know somebody's knocked out and their head bounces off the curb um, and they can die so you've got to take encounters on the street and, and self-defense incredibly seriously um, and only deploy it if you think it's necessary but as I say I personally this isn't advice, this is just my own perspective, um, strike preemptively, so as soon as somebody walks into striking range I will strike them, usually from a neutral pose as well so I won't give away that I'm going to do it. Often as I've said in the past, instead of like a, an act of guard, um, instead you can have your hands up in like a, you know, like, please don't hurt me, please don't hurt me, please back off, please back off, rah, 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 whatever, this kind of like what looks like a passive pose but this is this your hands are there ready especially for open palm you know you're ready for those those strikes to come in okay um, and it's a guard as well so if they do um, particularly if they're taller and have a longer reach than you if they do go to strike in you then have your hands there to block or parry or you know you're ready to slip off or whatever um, however the situation unfolds but as I say um, I do believe in the preemptive strike, um, but flowing back into the relevancy to this debate, um, there are situations where you might get hit first, um, and I'll just outline a few of those. So the first one is if you have been foolish, gobby, and haven't preemptively striked, which is kind of why I talked a bit there about preemptive striking and why it's important. If you've been gobby or you've been kind of just unaware of the level of escalation of the situation, you may get punched first. The other thing, which um, this has happened to me before, um, although I wasn't punched, um, I was involved, um, is that you accidentally get misidentified as part of a group of people, um, and if a kind of slightly disorganised, chaotic um, brawl breaks out, there isn't the time for people to assess whether you're part of a group or not. Sometimes you just get dragged into it by proxy because of your physical proximity to what's going on. Um, so that can happen and you need to prepare for that. And that's not your fault, but you still need to be prepared for it because no one's going to jump in and save you if, you know, it's gone to chaos and actually it's just every man for himself at that point. You know, it's dog eat dog and you need to eat that dog. You need to be willing to out dog the dog, do you know what I mean? 
it's a weird string of metaphors, but anyway. <laughs> um, but you know, and, and 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 the other situation in which you might get hit first is you simply didn't see the attacker. So if it's a mugging, for example, um, the attacker might hit you first because they were possibly just walking past you, and you don't expect that every single person who walks near you is necessarily a threat, and they might hit first. So in the first video, as I say, um, I demonstrate essentially being hit by a right cross or a right hook, um, and I assume that you know the right cross or the right hook doesn't drop me. Obviously, if it drops you, you're in a whole different situation. Um, relying on either scrambling to your feet very quickly or if you're dazed by the shot um, and think you're unable to scramble to your feet making sure that you know you're in a um, position um, in which you're not easily mounted um, so relying on that kind of like groundwork um, from your back that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu um, whereby you use your feet to create a blockade between you and the attacker um, up kicks from the ground are quite useful at that point, especially if you've got like military um, or steel toe cap boots on. You can try and kick them in the shins or in the knees, um, but make sure you're using your legs as a blockade between yourself and the attacker. Um, obviously, just to create that space between you and them. Um, but that's not the purpose of this video, and I'm not going to go into you know how to deal with being dropped in a street fight um, because chances are if you get dropped, you're probably in dire trouble anyway. Um, and there are plenty of videos out there that target this that will do it better than I personally can offer insight on because I haven't trained in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, but looking at this from a perspective of striking, as I say, I imitate getting punched in the face with a right cross and a right hook. And from those positions, I show you how if you dip into the left hand pocket, and when I say dip, I don't mean it in like a bob sense, I mean as in you're cracked and you sort of like hunch and limber over into the left hand pocket as a result of the force of the punch kind of being staggered is, is the best equivalent I can give you if you're staggered off to the left okay. if that punch didn't hurt you as much as necessarily the attacker might have thought it did it doesn't always hurt to play down to that okay, or, or to play up to their expectations I suppose is a better way of putting it it doesn't always hurt to do that so if for example you um, get punched in the face and it isn't you know anything more than a glancing blow it doesn't always hurt um, a bit like with um, in the Junior Dos Santos versus Derek Lewis fight um, it doesn't always hurt to um, hunch over and you know kind of imitate um, that the shot has done significant damage because that draws the opponent in often at that point they're on the aggressive um, end of sort of offense and they're not thinking about defense they're not guarding they just kind of charge in and that's when as I say you can launch the backwards hammer fist as a counter and I demonstrate in the video how that can be done so it can either be kind of a forearm bridge of the wrist or um, back of the fist strike to um, the jaw um, or it can be a um, you know similar styled shot to the nose um, and if you believe you are in dire danger and need a shot that will cause an immediate and severe impact on the opponent that shot can also be thrown to the throat caveat that can kill someone and I am only suggesting that in a case of you know serious serious danger so for example if the person has a bottle in their left hand they've just hooked you with their right hand and you think that the next thing that's going to come over your head is a bottle it might be worth throwing that um, back with Tana Fist to the throat because that will end the encounter immediately but then you need to call them an ambulance um, because if you land a back with Tana Fist in the way in which I demonstrate um, clean with full impact on the throat um, that person is going to be in serious trouble um, so you need to think about that aftermath part as well and the other really dirty shot which you can do obviously is a back with Tana Fist um, to the groin um, and the amount of torque you get on a backwards hammer fist, especially when you're in that hunched position, because you're getting a full heel toe sway, full hip swing, full momentum into it, um, you know, you'll hit them with enough force if you hit them in the groin to probably make them collapse and cause excruciating stomach pain, uh, make them nauseous, maybe make them vomit, you know. As bad as it gets in terms of groin shots, I can't think of a much harder shot, um, except for possibly teep kicks to the groin. 
or spearing um, Savat style kicks to the groin, you know. And knees, of course, as well. There are a host of strikes to the groin that are particularly unpleasant, but I would say a backwards hammer fist is, is up there. Um, but as I say, you know, if it really does hurt you, it's a great way of, in the moment, um, when you are feeling dazed and confused and disorientated, having a strike that you can um, throw that will surprise them um, and so is likely to connect um, and is likely to do a lot of damage due to the power of the strike. And you can throw it blind as well, that's the thing. You can use your left hand to protect your, your jaw and your chin um, and you can throw that strike having, you know, turned away from your opponent. Um, I wouldn't recommend this, of course it's always better to direct your strike, it's always better to have your eyes on your opponent as well to look at how they react and you know, adapt accordingly, but as I say, this is a strike that deals with situations in which you're not at the best angle to strike, aka you're hunched over and dazed after taking a shot. Okay, this strike can come back from an awkward angle like that, um, and also if you're dazed and confused after a shot, you might not be in a position where you're able to kind of like position yourself properly so you might be looking away you might have your hand across your jaw trying to protect against shots coming in because your opponent might be you know running in ready to start teeing off on the side of your head with hooks and trying to hammer fist you on the back of the head um you know trying to get you down so um as i say like you might throw that shot blind but a backwards hammer fist if it lands anywhere from the groin to the head it's going to cause a lot of damage so um, it's one that can be fired blind and is still effective. The other thing with it as well is that it can be doubled up on quite quickly, so it's a nice shot that you can snap in and snap another one off almost instantaneously after. It's a nice combination shot, as with the standard hammer fist from sort of like an axe position from the top. Um, you know, it's a shot that you can develop a lot of torque on in a very short space and is an incredibly powerful shot for doubling, tripling, quadrupling up on shots. Um, but as I say, the main advantage of it is that it's useful from an unorthodox angle. Um, so, you know, you can utilise it when you're not in the best position, when you're in a position where actually you're kind of striking from a diagonal or perpendicular position from your opponent um, as a result of something they've done. So it could be footwork, it could be a punch. Um, it's a really great way of, you know, utilising an odd angle and catching them with an unusual shot. Also, the fact that it's an unusual shot means I really severely doubt that they will block it because um, it's an odd shot to use. It's not one that is conventional. It's not one I doubt that they'll ever have had used on them in a street fight before. Um, so it's definitely, you know, it's an advantageous one to throw because I don't think it will get blocked, especially if you double it up off a hook. So, kind of moving forwards, um, the last two demonstrations I record, one of them is utilization of boxing in the pocket so I show how you can use head movement to um, avoid incoming shots now obviously guys as a caveat um, and as I mentioned prior you know my MCL was partially torn two weeks ago so I'm not kicking I'm not doing a massive amount of um, footwork you know and in the street fight there'd be a whole um, issue of range an issue of um, making sure your stance isn't jaded, making sure that you're aware of incoming takedowns, clinch work, um, inside fighting, dirty boxing, all of this, okay? I can't imitate that with a bag, but I can just break down techniques and demonstrate, you know, aspects, and that's all I do here. So as I say, you know, the second demonstration is boxing in the pocket, lots of head movement, lots of upper body movement, you know, because ultimately, yes, you can block in a street fight, but because it's bare knuckle, blocking shots is still incredibly painful you know unless you're taking the shots on muscle like you're taking them on the shoulders or on the arms but you know a fist is really really small compared to a glove so it's quite easy for a fist to slip through a guard um, especially if that person has any knowledge at all or any experience of punching and how to you know slip through a guard and how to connect with punches so I always think in a street fight if I'm honest it's better to have really really good reflexes and really really solid head movement um, just to essentially avoid taking the shots in the first place so as I say you know I show a bit of boxing in the pocket I show a bit of head movement and I show you how um, you can double up on hooks by mixing in that backwards hammer fist off of the hook um, and as I say it's such an unusual shot I doubt the person who's seen it before and I doubt they'll expect it and I doubt they'll guard for it and that'll get a clean shot off because let's say for example you know you come in with that 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 right hook okay yeah and they block it okay 
as you draw through, so as that right hook comes over, yeah, they're not going to be expecting at that point for you to rip back um, with that back with hammer first. Um, I, I severely doubt they will expect that. Um, and it can be done so quickly and with so much torque that even if that right hook is completely blocked, as you come back through with the right hand, um, you know, you're very likely to land that clean on the chin with a lot of torque and that should be enough to drop your average untrained person who decides to engage you in a street fight. Um, so it's really effective. In the second demonstration I try to um, incorporate a little bit more realism in terms of I'm a lot more conscious of distance, range, um, I use some dirty strikes so I, I utilize um, some eye poking. Um, Again, it's like only pseudo-realistic because there's a very limited range of what I can demonstrate with the bag. But um, as I say, like, there's more of a kind of consciousness of range, and um, I, I use some eye pokes. Um, and the other thing is as well, I'm boxing bare knuckle because, as I mentioned at the start, and I really want to stress this: if you want to use this technique, try it on the bag first, and you'll realise how much it sucks. Okay, when you throw a hook and then you double up by firing back with the spinning, uh, not spinning, sorry, the um, backwards um, ham fist. Okay, it sucks. When you throw a few of them um, to several of them, like your hand will start to ache. Um, if you're throwing them with a lot of power, even with clean technique, without clean technique, you'll do your hand damage. So don't throw them unless you don't know how to throw them. But fundamentally, you know they suck, and you need to know that they suck because if you want to use them, you need to know what that's going to feel like when you do go to use them. Um, so as I say, you know you need to do that training. So you've got me setting up the technique. You've got me committing to the technique um, with boxing in the pocket and then you've got a more realistic rangy um, encounter in which I'm kind of using them with bare knuckle shots um, and I amp the speed up as well on the shots and make them a bit tighter um, and, and, and more snappy almost like almost like um, a, a knife I'm utilizing my hand as if I have a knife in it and I'm kind of cutting through and then cutting back um, is, is the motion um, any of you guys out there who are in the military, you'll you'll know what I mean in terms of, um, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a knife fighting technique. Fundamentally, it's drawn from um, the utilization of weapons in fighting, and it's just taking that concept and translating it to bare hand. So, without further ado, I will let you move on to the videos. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you enjoy the technique. Let me know if it's already a part of your arsenal and what you think of it. Take care, and for now, keep boxing. Stay safe, everyone.